there will be times when you need to photograph at really low shutter speeds. For example, for architecture photography, for product photography, landscape photography, you need to keep your camera really, really still. And although image stabilization can be great for photographing in low light, once you get past a certain point, it gets extremely challenging to keep that camera steady. So say you're photographing architecture or landscapes or products. In those situations, you need to have everything set up and everything needs to be really, really still, especially if you're doing, say, sunrise shots, sunset shots, where exposures could be really long, several seconds or perhaps even 30, 40 seconds if you're doing something like waterfall photography. We'll talk about those separately, but the most important thing is you need something to stabilize your equipment and keep it very still. Now you might put your camera on a rock or some other hard surface that doesn't move and get those really slow shutter speeds without introducing blur to your images. But the best way to do it is to do it properly, which is to use equipment that's designed for that particular use. So you have tripods, monopods, and other accessories that help you achieve that. On this table right here, I have a mix of different equipment. I have tripods, I have a monopod, and I have different heads that are designed for different use. When you buy something like a tripod, a lot of people will fall into this trap by buying the cheapest available one. So they'll go out and buy whatever $20, $30 cheaper tripod that they can find Best Buy, Walmart, or any other store. So that's exactly what I did. I just went out and bought this cheapo. It says Sunpack Ultra 6000 PG. In fact, if you look at the packaging, pretty funny, it says, Platinum Plus by Sunpack Ultra 6000 PG. If you see something like that, Mega, Ultra, Super, Duty, blah, 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 that probably means it's not a very good tripod. So in this case, look at this one. I mean, it's flimsy, it's, it's lightweight, it's nice, but all this stuff will start eventually breaking down. But the most important thing is, once you mount the camera on this, it will not securely hold it. Look at how bad this is. So if you're photographing with a high-end camera and you obviously spend a lot of money on your camera and your lenses you want to make sure that you actually put it on something stable you don't want to have an accident while you're out shooting there will be cases where you'll be out shooting for example John was telling me a story where he was by the ocean side he went out about a $30 tripod and just sand and the the motion of the water was enough to tip the camera and almost everything collapsed something like that could happen to you the worst is if you have those precious moments on your camera and you have a really bad tripod and everything falls apart, those memories are gone forever. So you want to avoid that. That's why I always recommend to invest once. So if you buy a tripod, a monopod, whatever you buy, make sure that you buy a really, really good one because you'll buy it once and you will never have to buy it again. Now, before I talk about tripods, heads, and other tools that help you stabilize your system, I want to first show you the difference between a tripod and a monopod. So right here, I have a monopod. And the nice thing about monopods, mono means basically one, so it only has one leg, but it's extendable. So in this case, if I, I can have it at the minimum height right here, really nice for travel, uh, really easy to pack. But if I wanted to have it at eye level, all I have to do is extend these fully, and then I can have it at eye level. I could mount my camera on it, or I, if I have a really long and heavy lens, I could mount the lens on it. Now, the nice thing about this is that it doesn't take a lot of space. So you just put in one point, so if you're shooting shoulder to shoulder without a photographer, say, covering a sports event or maybe photographing your child at a game, then you can just occupy very small space. So that's a really nice thing about monopods. But at the same time, you obviously cannot release it. If you let it go, everything will fall down, so you have to keep it steady. Also, it really doesn't help with keeping your setup really stable. So if I'm shooting at a sports event, I'm probably shooting at really high shutter speeds. That probably is not very relevant. But if I'm photographing landscapes or photographing, say, star trails at night, I want to have really long shutter speeds. And this is just not going to work because it relies on my hand to hold it. Here we have a tripod. Now the tripod work works very differently because once you set it up, as you can see, there's tri three, so three legs, and I have the top right here. Now this is really stable. And this is something that you want for landscape photography, for architecture photography, for anything that's really long shutter speeds, you want to use a tripod. If I'm traveling, I usually carry something like this. 
Now, if you look at the differences, it's pretty obvious. You know, this one is much shorter. I can fit this in a bag. I can put this into my camera bag or my regular luggage. And the nice thing about this is that it's really lightweight, really portable. So if I go backpacking or maybe I'm traveling, I'll usually just have this. Now, there are different considerations for choosing a particular tripod. I actually have a guide that I published that you can look at. It specifically shows the different components of tripods and how to choose one that best suits your needs and your budget. But there are some considerations. For example, this mechanism right here to extend the feet is called twist lock. So you basically twist it, you extend it, and you lock it, right? So other tripods like this cheaper one, and there will be even higher end ones that have the flip lock mechanism. As you can see, you flip it open and then you extend the leg and then you can secure it by closing it back. Now, it, it comes down to individual preferences. I personally prefer the twist lock and the, these Gizzo series are really good for that. It's just easier for me to twist, move, open, extend, and then collapse the same way. Whereas some people prefer the flip locks. Another major consideration is the type of material that's used to make the legs of tripods and monopods. Now, the most popular two types are aluminum and carbon fiber. Let's talk about those real quick. Aluminum legs can greatly vary in weight. Some are thinner, like the Sunpack right here, and hence lighter, while others are stronger, thicker, and heavier. Now, carbon fiber is a much better material than aluminum. Not only is it designed to handle a lot of load, but it's also significantly lighter. So if weight becomes an issue for you and you don't want to lug around with that huge tripod that weighs a ton, consider a carbon fiber tripod. Another important factor is height. So I'm about five feet, seven inches tall. And when I choose a tripod, I need to choose a tripod that's tall enough to suit my height. And in the case of the Gizzo that I was talking about earlier, this is a two section tripod. And if I extend it fully, then it, once I have the ball head and the camera or any other tripod head, which, which I will talk about shortly, and the camera mounted on top of it, then it actually fits my needs pretty well. But if you're taller than me, then you need to consider to have also potentially tripod with uh, longer legs or more sections. Lastly, there are tripod feet. With this Gizzo right here that I showed earlier, I have rubber feet, which are replaceable. So if I wanted to, I could swap these out for spiked feet. Now, not all tripods have them, but the high-end ones will allow you to replace those. All right, hopefully that's plenty of information for you to understand the importance of tripods and their components. Now, let's move on to tripod heads. Just like tripods, there are different heads for different types of use. So right here, I have a high-end head by Really Right Stuff. Now, this is obviously expensive head, which I use for different types of situations. I could mount a really heavy camera here, whether I shoot with medium format, large format. This head will handle all that load. And then there are also other heads, say, like this one, which is a really small head. Now, obviously, I don't want the small head on a really heavy tripod like this. It just doesn't make any sense because the tripod is heavy, but the head itself cannot handle a lot of load. So this head is perfect for my traveling tripod. Now let's talk about the different types of heads. Right here, I have something called a ball head. And the reason why it's called a ball head because you can see that there's actually a ball in here. And the nice thing about ball heads is that there are tension knobs in here. So if I release this tension knob, I can rotate this very smoothly and angle my camera at any angle, then once I secure it, it's really, really stable. So ball heads are really nice if you're photographing, say, landscapes, architecture, for those situations, it's perfect. One negative thing about the ball head is that if I release it too much and I have all that weight, look at what happens, it drops. Now, there are situations where a ball head is just not going to do the work. And for those needs, for example, for shooting wildlife, look at how massive this head is. Now, this is something called a gimbal head. So right here, I have a ProMedia gear head. It's a really nice one. And I have a 200, 400 millimeter Nikon lens, great for wildlife, and a camera attached to it. Now, if I had a ball head, I would have to constantly fiddle with the knob or to release the tension, to secure it. Here, once I have it balanced, properly balanced, as you can see, I can 
release my hand and nothing will happen. It will, nothing will drop. But the great thing about it is that it allows me for vertical movement like this and panning. So if I have a bird that's flying and I'm following the bird, this setup, I would actually put my hand like this for stabilization reasons, but if I'm shooting a bird and I'm trying to follow a bird, this setup is really flexible. So I could just go shoot and follow the bird. Really, really nice. With a ball head, I would have to release the knob and make sure that I hold the camera constantly. So something like this is much more preferred for wildlife and sports photography. Now there are different types of tripod heads out there. We're not going to cover them all, but I personally prefer to shoot with a ball head or a gimbal head depending on the type of photography I do. Other people will prefer something like this. This is a three-way, and the nice thing about something like this is that you release the tension, you can go vertical, or you can change the orientation of the camera, or by releasing the tension right here, you can pan around it. There are also heads like this. Now this is a pistol grip, and personally I've never seen a good pistol grip, but basically the way that it works is you squeeze this, and that allows you to release the tension. Then once you release it, it's supposed to be good. But look, even with this supposed to be ten tense and secure, you can see that it's actually not a very good head. So those are some, some of the things that you have to consider when choosing between different types of heads. Another important variable when looking at tripod heads is how your camera or your lens physically mount to that tripod head. So earlier I talked about the Really Right Stuff ball head. It's a really nice head, but I need to know how my camera will physically, or the lens will physically mount on this head. So this particular system is called Arca Swiss Quick Release System. And it was originally developed by a German company called Arca Swiss, and hence the name. The nice thing about it is that it's basically a plate system where if you buy something like this, this is called an L bracket, you could mount your camera on it and you can switch horizontal or vertical orientation, that's why it's the L head or L bracket, and once you have something like this, if you look, it actually has cutouts right here. So the way this would work is if I had the camera mounted right here, I simply open this up, tighten it, and it's really, really secure. So right here, I would be shooting in a vertical orientation. If I wanted to switch to horizontal orientation, it goes the other way. The nice thing about this is it slides, and they're actually, in some of these, they're, they're a stopping point. So even if you release it, it won't fall off. Now, the nice thing about Arca Swiss system is that once I determine what types of plates I need, whether it's for my cameras or for my lenses, then I just mount them once, and they're there. And all I have to do is when I need to use it, I simply, again, untighten, put this on, tighten it up, and I'm set to go. Now, in this particular ball head, I have something called screw knob. So I basically screw and unscrew to tighten and untighten my equipment. Really nice, works for me. But some people actually prefer to use flip locks. So right here, I have a flip lock. I can actually open it up put my camera or my lens on it, and then once I close it, I'm done. So this is more convenient to use, but there's one consideration. You just need to make sure that whatever plate you're using is actually compatible with this. While these Arca Swiss quick release systems are really nice and convenient for someone who shoots with multiple camera bodies and lenses, maybe you only have one camera, and owning something like this might be expensive. So if you bought your tripod or a monopod, it might have come with a head already. So right here, I have something called just a regular quick release system. Now this is not Arca Swiss. It works a little bit differently because the way this works is there's only one common plate. This head in particular will only fit this plate. So what I do is I mount this plate on the camera or maybe my lens, and then I can put this right here, push it, lock it, and that's how it gets locked. So let's wrap up this discussion on tripods and monopods. The most important takeaway for you should be to consider tripods and monopods as an investment. For me, when I bought this carbon fiber tripod seven years ago, it was a great investment. I use this tripod in all kinds of situations, whether it's for photographing landscapes or wildlife, and it has served me greatly. Now, if you're a portrait photographer or someone who doesn't need a tripod on a regular basis, maybe you don't need to spend a lot of money on something like this. Consider buying something lower end. However, just don't buy something like this. It might have cost you $30 as cheap, but then do you want to put that expensive camera on something like this? It just doesn't make sense.
When it comes to memory cards, there are a few different considerations to keep in mind. For example, type and speed. Now there's many different types out there, but for digital cameras, the two most common are going to be Compact Flash, or CF, and Secure Digital, or SD. SD cards are these smaller cards, and they're found in many of the cameras on the market today. Now they used to be slower and not nearly as reliable, but these days they're a lot better than they used to be and are even found in professional bodies. You'll see different numbers on the memory cards and they're all important. First, we're gonna talk about size. Now this particular card is a 16 gigabyte card, whereas this one is a 64 gigabyte card. This actually holds four times more images than this one does. Now why is that important? If you have a, a camera that writes large files or you just like to take a lot of images on one go, a bigger card is definitely gonna be more useful to you because it's gonna allow you to shoot more without changing cards nearly as often. Another important consideration with size is how much information do you actually want to keep on one card? As a wedding photographer, it's a little scary to me to put an entire wedding's worth of images on one memory card. What happens if I lose it? Then I'm pretty much out of luck. So sometimes it's nice to break it across smaller memory cards just so all your eggs aren't in one basket. Second, let's talk about card speeds. I've got two cards here, and this card is rated at 95 megabytes per second, whereas this card is rated at 20 megabytes per second. This card is a lot faster than this card. So why does that matter to you? If you're a sports or wildlife photographer and shoot bursts of images, or if you shoot high depth video, you're gonna want a faster card so that your camera can write the information to the card faster. Third, there's class. Class indicates a minimum baseline performance for a memory card. You can see on this card, it's class 10, which means it's guaranteed to write 10 megabytes per second to this card. This is a class six. That means it's guaranteed to write six megabytes per second to the card. But look at the maximum speed. This one will write up to 95 megabytes per second. That means it's going to be a lot faster than this one that can only write a maximum of 20 megabytes per second. One last thing about card speeds. Some manufacturers refer to it in, with an X instead of megabytes per second. Now this card says 400X. Basically, the higher the number, the faster the card, just like when you have 95 megabytes per second versus 20 megabytes per second. If you really wanna know the info and how they're correlated, you can look it up online, but just know the higher the number, the faster the card. You need to know that not all cameras can actually support the latest memory card technologies. Make sure you check your camera manual and see that it will support the latest and greatest memory cards before spending a bunch of money on something that your camera might not even be able to take advantage of. I could go on and on about memory cards, but that's not important. If you wanna know more, there's tons of information online. Let's talk about how you properly store them and protect them. Now, most memory cards come with a little plastic case like this. This is great for just one card at a time. You can keep it in your pocket, you can throw it in your bag, but it's also really easy to get lost. The compact flash ones are a little more sturdy, but still, it's not gonna offer the best protection for your card. Ideally, you'll want something like a card wallet or a card case. Now these card wallets, they're great. They're Velcro closure, they unroll, hold a lot of different memory cards. You can put compact flash, SD, or any other format that you use. They roll up safely, and there's even a clip that you can clip into your, your camera case so that if this happens to fall out, it's not going to get lost forever. This case is really similar. It's a snap, it's a Pelican case, which means it's waterproof, but also it's got little foam inserts for all the different cards. Now you'll want different inserts or even a different case for different card formats, but this keeps it really secure so I can turn it upside down and nothing falls out. If you've got proper storage for your cards, there's no reason they won't last you for a really long time. So now that you've got your lenses, your camera bodies, and your accessories, you need some place to keep it all. A camera bag is an essential piece of gear. There are lots of different types of bags out there on the market. For me, it took a few bags before I found one that I really liked and had all the right features. So don't worry if the first bag you buy doesn't fit you perfectly. Eventually, you'll figure out exactly what you need from a bag. But to help you, we're gonna talk about a few different features that you'll find on camera bags. Now this particular bag, this is a Think Tank Airport series. Now don't get stuck on the name, there's lots of brands out there, there's lots of good brands. They all do the same thing, you'll just have to find one that's right for you. So the airport typically means it's built for overhead specifications, so it's gonna fit as a carry-on bag. It's also got these wheels on it, 
which makes it really easy to carry around through airports or just from shoot to shoot. So it has a handle that pops out, just like a piece of luggage. And really, if you have a lot of gear that's really heavy, the wheels take such a load off of your back or your shoulders. So what other kinds of bags are out there? Well, if you don't want wheels, you can always carry it on your back. Now you can see this is clearly a backpack. It's got two straps, just go over your shoulders, wear it just like a normal backpack. The one thing to be careful about is if you do have a lot of gear in here, it's gonna really make your shoulders and back sore, so just be, be careful how much you put into it. So let's take a quick look inside. You can see it's got some pockets in it up here for filters, for memory cards, for other little accessories. The inside, you can move these dividers around and configure it however works best for you. So let's talk about another type of bag. That's a backpack, but there's also just a sling bag. Now sling bags, they just have one strap on them. This basically goes across your chest so that you, the, the bag part stays on your back. You still get the support, but there's a good trick here. Let me show you. So you can see the strap goes across my chest here, but there's just one strap. Now, the trick to this is I don't actually have to take it off to get to my gear. Watch. Now that it's here, I can unzip this, pull up my camera, change lenses, and I can actually even use it to shoot on if I, if I need a bit more stability. So I've got one more type of bag that I want to show you. Now this is just a single shoulder strap bag. The good thing about this is it's fairly small compared to these other bags. You can only fit a few lenses and camera body in it, but it still gets pretty heavy. And when you only have the one point of contact, this one strap, it can actually really make your shoulder sore if you carry it around for, for an entire day. So that's pretty much camera bags. Just make sure you try out a few different ones. They all are gonna be made for different purposes and finding the right one for you might take a little bit of time. Be patient, it'll happen. There's some great bags out there. We're gonna quickly talk about accessories. Now I say quickly because there are so many on the market for photographers, we could be here for days if we talked about everything that's available. So we have different categories of accessories, a few of which we're gonna talk about today. There's cleaning products to help keep your lenses, sensors, and cameras clean. There's things that help you carry and manage your equipment. And then there's things that actually help you with your photography. So first there's items that help you clean your lens or camera. There's something like this rocket blower. This actually just squeeze, you squeeze it and it blows air. I would definitely choose a larger one than a smaller one. It just is a lot easier to use. You can use it on your lens to blow dust off or you can actually blow dust off your sensor as well. Now once your lens has the dust removed, you can use something like this. It's a cleaning solution and a really nice lint-free cloth. The cloth is made for lenses so it doesn't scratch. The cleaning solution is made for lenses. Make sure you don't use Windex, alcohol, or any other strong chemicals because it'll actually remove those coatings on your lens. Next, let's talk about filters. Filters go in front of your lens and actually affect the light that's coming into your lens. This, for example, is a neutral density filter. It reduces the amount of light entering your lens. There's also clear filters like this one. They're mainly just used for protecting the front of your lens. There's lots of different types and sizes of filters out there, so don't just think there's these two. There's also filters that fit into filter holders. Now this is a filter holder, this is a filter. The nice thing about this one, and landscape photographers love these, is you can actually move your filter up and down just by sliding it. Now there's, like I said, there's lots of different types of filters out there. If you wanna learn about all of them and a lot more information, just go to photographylife.com and there's a great article there. There's also timers, remotes, and intervalometers. Now what these do, a remote is just like your TV remote. This little one is awesome. You can put it right in your pocket. You push the button, the shutter goes, that's all it does. There's also some that are wireless. There's some that are corded. Now this one, for example, this mounts on your hot shoe, plugs into your camera. And with this, you can trigger your camera remotely. You can set it to shoot a series of, of images, or you can also just have it on a self timer so it sets one every so often. Now, if you want to modify your camera a little bit, you might consider a grip. Now, what a grip is, you can see this camera actually ends here. This bottom part is the grip. Now, the great thing about grips is they increase battery life, but they also, you can switch from shooting landscape mode 
to portrait mode and still have the controls that you're used to. There's also accessories made for specific types of photography. For example, this is made for panoramic photography, but depending on what kind of photography you enjoy, I'm sure there's a specialty item out there made just for you. Finally on this table, we've got straps. Now every camera comes with a camera strap, but maybe you want something that's a little more padded or just a little more you. So this one here, you can see, has this big heavy duty attachment, screws into the tripod mount on your camera, and has a really thick padded strap. This one is just a little bit different. It's also padded, but it's also a little bit stretchy. So it's, there's really no right or wrong as far as camera straps go. Just personalize it, pick one that works great for you.